At the start of 2018, it was estimated that more than 550,000 Americans were homeless on a single night, according to the White House Council of Economic Advisors. But who are the people behind this number? What do you think of when you hear the word homeless? Do you imagine an unkempt man in dirty clothes standing on the sidewalk holding a cardboard sign reading, Anything Helps? If so, you're not alone. It's a common stereotype and a damaging one because it doesn't show the full picture. Take New York City, for example, where nearly 70% of people living in homeless shelters are families. There are about 79,000 to 89,000 people who are homeless. And the vast majority are in shelters, and the largest population is made up of children. That's Nikita Stewart, a reporter at the New York Times and author of Troop 6000, the Girl Scout troop that began in a shelter and inspired the world. Her book tells the story of Giselle Burgess, a mother living in a homeless shelter in New York City with her five children. At that time, she was living in a budget hotel that had been turned into a shelter. Her family ended up in the hotel after being evicted from their apartment, which was to be torn down to build a condominium building. Management at the hotel turned home the shelter required residents to observe extremely strict rules that limited many families from living normally. There weren't any sleepovers. They had curfews. It was just a very different life, one that Giselle, in fact, described as living in jail because the families lived in hotel rooms. There were two double beds. There was no privacy. You're just living in one room. Many families lived in the hotel for more than a year. Plus, the families residing in the shelter had no place to cook meals from scratch. There's nothing like that home-cooked meal. You can remember what your mom made or what your dad made that, you know, comforted you. And a lot of children have one, two, three years of not having those meals, of having these frozen dinners and sandwiches that are given to them because their rooms don't have kitchens. To make up for this unconventional lifestyle, Burgess wanted to provide some kind of normalcy. She had fond memories of being a Girl Scout during her childhood and wanted to give her daughters the same opportunity, so asked for permission to start a Girl Scout troop in the hotel. But it wasn't easy. There was a lot of red tape. But finally, Stewart says Burgess got the green light. She recruited girls from public housing units and other homeless shelters in the area. Troop 6000 flourished under Burgess's guidance, and ironically, soon the girls were volunteering to serve meals at a homeless shelter for single women. But at the time, the city was dealing with a lot of backlash to homelessness. And when I say that, I'm talking about the mayor wanted to open 90 new shelters to accommodate the number of people who had become homeless. The shelter system was just inadequate. But a lot of communities did not want shelters. They believed that their property values would fall. They just believed that homeless people were, you know, a bad element. That's when a city councilman came up with an idea to spread the story of Troop 6000. A council member, Jimmy Van Bramer, who himself had experienced homelessness as a child and whose family had struggled most of his life, he saw a lot of his mother in Giselle, and he believed strongly in the Girl Scouts. Um, his mother and his sisters were involved in Girl Scouts when he was growing up. And once Giselle established the troop in the hotel that had been turned into a shelter, he decided to reach out to the New York Times. So that meant he reached me, and I started reporting on Troop 6000 and I wrote a story. It ran on Easter weekend in 2017, and Troop 6000 just took off. The New York Times article written by Stewart quickly went viral. Soon the girls of Troop 6000 were making appearances across the country and breaking the myths associated with homelessness. It really changed the conversation in a lot of communities. You know, there's still a long way to go, but at least many people started realizing that there were also families 
and children experiencing homelessness. The raised awareness and media attention was exciting for Burgess and her young scouts. They met celebrities and received gifts, such as computers. Even a car was donated to the troop. But Stewart says it was all a bit surreal because at the end of the day, the girls were still homeless. Everyone was cheering them, and after all of those activities, they would go home each night to shelter. And so they welcomed the applause. It was nice, but there was still the issue that they needed housing. Stewart points out that it's a little-known fact that over one-third of homeless families living in the shelters in New York City are headed by at least one parent who has a full-time job. Burgess herself was working full-time while living in public housing, but at the time, her annual salary of $37,000 wasn't enough to feed and clothe five children, pay outstanding medical bills and debt racked up during previous unemployment, Plus, cover the high cost of rent in New York City. New York City is legally mandated to provide shelter to anyone eligible. Other cities do not have that. So I really fear that we are going to see families and children living in their cars and being in encampments. In order to build more shelters and affordable housing, both favorable public opinion and political will are needed. With the publication of her book and the notoriety of Troop 6000, Stewart is hopeful that people will shift their perception of homeless shelters. This wasn't about people giving handouts and then everything turns out great for someone. This was about the families and the girls making their own way. And yes, as a society, we should be ashamed <laughs> of the way our government works and our income inequality. But I think because the girls could see that and do see that now, and their parents and like Giselle, that they, I feel, are really going to make a difference in government someday and in our laws and our policies because they live through it and they can have some influence. Giselle Burgess's amazing success story doesn't end with her finding permanent housing for her family. You can read all about it in Nikita Stewart's book, Troop 6000, the Girl Scout troop that began in a shelter and inspired the world, available now. You can also learn more about Stewart and all of our past guests by visiting our website at viewpointsradio.org. This segment was written and produced by Polly Hansen and Amira Zaveri. I'm Gary Price. Coming up on Viewpoints. So construction has become ludicrous. We don't need as much space as we're building. But what are we building towards? Then. Mostly it was my mental torture chamber. I have got to leave this. You know you've got to leave this, man. What do you know about Scientology? I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. That's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of MediaTracks Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Viewpoints.